Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video and update video to the AMD 3000 series, especially talking about the Ajisa version. Um, in my first video for Ryzen 3000, I said that most of the CPUs I tested or all the CPUs I tested would not hit the advertised boost frequency. For example, 3900X would not hit uh, 4.6 gigahertz in any condition. So AMD reached out to me after the test I performed after the video I showed online and asked if I could retest with the latest Ajisa version, the 1003, which I did for this video. And in this video we'll talk about the result of the comparison of 1002 to 1003. What you have to keep in mind is, especially when I showed my first results, is the fact that all those videos, all those contents were shot like three or four weeks before launch of the CPU. You have to keep in mind we need a lot of time testing, then I have to send out my videos to Mary, she's cutting all the videos and then we're um, pushing the videos online and two days of having time for a new Agisa version is simply not enough. There was not enough time to retest, but we will now go over a comparison of 1002 to 1003 if there is even a difference. The first comparison will be Time Spy Extreme because it's a very good mix of GPU load, which has a light CPU load and also very high CPU load in the end. We will compare first the old Agisa version 1002 with AMD stock cooler, then the same with AIO, then we will uh, install the chipset driver because all the previous testing I was doing was without chipset driver but AMD said for this CPU it's really important to have the chipset driver installed so I also tested that and then the last test is with 1003 with the latest Agisa version. Initial test with AMD's stock cooler with times by extreme you can see the first 60 to 75 percent is the the GPU test, which has a lighter load for the CPU. Still, we are just at about 4.1 gigahertz. It just shows that the AMD stock cooler is a thermal limit for the CPU, especially when we're going in the last 20% of the run, which is the CPU test. Most of the cores are somewhere between 3.4 and 4 gigahertz. You can see there is a big thermal limit involved. If we now change to an AIO, you can see this changes quite a lot. Especially in the GTs, there is a huge fluctuation in the core frequency, which is, as I said before, because the GPU test is a little bit lighter for the CPU. There is one spike in the first quarter, which is marked yellow, where the CPU goes to 4575 MHz. That's the highest peak I could see during the time spike stream. All the rest is more in the region of 4.5, but mostly somewhere between 4.3 GHz, especially during the CPU test and the end, it's just 4.2. Installing the chipset driver really changed it a little bit. You can see there are, there are more spikes, the CPU is boosting a little bit more, but it's still not hitting the 4.6. There is one spike in the very beginning, where you can see it's green, that's hitting 4.575, but that's before the benchmark launched, so that doesn't really count, but all the other spikes during the benchmark are somewhere between 4.5 and 4.55. Transferring to the latest Agisa version, so 1003, there are actually less spikes. The CPU is boosting a little bit less than before. You can see still somewhere between 4.4, 4.5 during the GT and during the CPU test it's somewhere between yeah, 4.1 and 4.2. Time Spy Extreme is a synthetic test which typically has multi-threaded load during the whole test, so it's kind of hard to judge if the load is maybe too high, if there is too much multi-threaded load to get the real single core boost. That's why I also performed Cinebench R15 run, first with the old Agisa version, then with the new Agisa version. For the, for the test, I'm just running multi-threaded first and then single-threaded afterwards. In the first 16 seconds of the chart, you can see the multi-threaded run and then the single-threaded run, which takes roughly two minutes. Some of the spikes you can see are going to 4.5, mostly it's around 4.3 with the old Agisa version. Changing to the new Agisa version really changed it quite a bit. You can see the CPU boosts now to 4.4 to 4.5 during the single threaded test, but you can see it never boosts to 4.6 in my test. 
Benchmarks are fun, but the question is how is it in real life when you're gaming with a 3900X? That's why I played a round of PUBG and recorded the frequency over time with hardware info. First, with the older Giza version, you can see the boost is somewhere between 4.2, 4.25, not really that high. In the end, the spikes you can neglect because that's when I quit out of the game, that doesn't really count. Changing to the newer Agisa version, it also does not change. CPU is still at about 4.2, maybe boosts by 25 megahertz, but it's far away from 4.4, 4.5 or even 4.6, which could be that the load to the cores is too high, that it cannot boost to 4.5 or 4.6. Last part of the test is Adobe Premiere, rendering a 4K video, simply a YouTube video which I recorded for my YouTube channel, rendering about 12 minute length and then recording the time it takes. Obviously we will talk about um, the performance afterwards. I also did some memory scaling which we will talk about in a minute. But first let's take a look at the frequency. You can see the rendering time takes about 900 seconds roughly and you can see it boosts somewhere between 4.2 and 4.4 with the old Agisa version. Changing to the new Agisa version, it's still kind of the same boost from 4.2 to maybe 4.4, but it's still far away from 4.6, which could be because the rendering load is so high that the load on the CPU is too much for it to be able to boost somewhere to like 4.6. As I said before, I also performed memory scaling testing with the R9 3900X in Adobe Premiere 4K rendering. As I said before, rendering the 12 minute video, the typical YouTube video I'm showing on my channel. And I performed um, multiple runs comparing um, the stock memory speed of 2133 MHz up to 3600 C16, which you can see in this chart right here. At um, 2133 MHz, the R9 3900X is really slow. It's slower than the 32 core Threadripper and only pushing it to 2666 C15, it already bypasses the 32 core Threadripper by almost one minute, which is really impressive. Almost beats the 14 core Intel. Going to 3000 or up to 3600 C16, we can beat the 14 core Intel with the 12 core AMD chip, which is really impressive, which is something I have not seen before in Adobe Premiere. So it really shows that fast memory is important, especially for rendering. If you're planning to use the CPU for Adobe Premiere, then you should also get memory something between 3000 and 3600 megahertz. I would not go higher because from my experience on a lot of boards it's really difficult to boot even 3600. So 3200 is a lot less pain and uh, yeah a lot more reliable I think and the performance increase from 3200 to 3600 is not really that much so probably not worth it. Just as a conclusion in the end, comparing the Agisa version 1002 versus 1003, we can see that there is a significant difference, especially in Cinebench R15. Looking at a single threaded boost, 1002, it was something between 4300 and 4400 megahertz on the CPU and with the newer Agisa version, it always boosted at least to 4.5. Still. I really have a lot of trouble to get this CPU to boost to 4.6. All of this was retail hardware, it was the retail latest BIOS. Considering that it's really so difficult to get the CPU to boost to 4.6 and I talked to other reviewers as well, a lot of people have trouble to get this CPU to always boost to 4.6. Typically it just doesn't boost to 4.6. Maybe one sample does it, maybe one sample doesn't do it. But then the question is, how much sense does it make to specify the CPU with a 4.6 GHz boost if it's really that difficult to get it to this boost frequency. Even with everything retail hardware, a new CPU I bought from the shop, I was not able to really get the CPU to boost to 4.6. It maybe did it once for one second at the start of a benchmark, but that's not what I would, con would consider boost. I would like to see the frequency always, for example, during Cinebench R15 single threaded test. That's what I would like to see. Let me know what I might do wrong or let me know what you think about the 4.6 gigahertz boost, which I just cannot get. So that's the end of the video. I will just drink my Coke Zero Pepsi, Pepsi Coke Zero, Pepsi Zero. That's the end of the video.